What's up you guys? Welcome back to another video. It's the first video of the new year. Happy New Year. Hope you guys had a happy holidays, Merry Christmas, whatever you guys celebrate. Welcome back to another video. Today, as you probably saw in the title, I got a Bamboo Lab A1 combo. I actually bought it the day that they launched, but because I was so busy with Christmas sales and then over New Year's, I actually got sick. I haven't been able to actually put it together and film this video for you guys until today. So the first video of 2024 is finally underway. We've got a lot to do today. Before we get into unboxing and setting up this new printer, my print shop is incredibly messy. So we're gonna take care of cleaning this place up, throwing some things away, organizing. Then we'll get into the unboxing. We have a lot to do, so let's get right into it. These are all the leftover spools that I have from Christmas. It's all the trash, not really usable at this point. You can see there's like nothing left. I could maybe make a keychain or something, but the basically empty rolls don't do super well in the AMS units. So at this point, I just consider them trash and move on to the next roll. sort of cleaned up. Before I can get the A1 unboxed and set up down here, I'm going to have to rearrange things a little bit. So right now I have my four P1Ps on this table just kind of in a line-ish. They're like turned so that I can access them. But for the A1 to fit on the table, I'm going to have to move them a little closer or arrange them differently. Um, so before I get it out of the box and start setting it up, I'm gonna get these printers moved around and make some space for it on the table. I think I'm gonna to try to put it right here on the end. I don't know if I've updated you guys since moving things around before. I had two AMS units on this printer here. I used those to stack it or to raise it a little bit, but because Christmas was so crazy, I had to move the third AMS to this P1P here. So now I have three of them that have single AMS units and then this one over here is still just a single color printer. Something else we're gonna try and take care of today, I've got the risers printed for both of these two printers. So we're gonna put those together and hopefully get them installed. So the print shop hopefully will be in a much different place at the end of today. Before I move things around, I need to empty out all my poops. Oh. <laughs> Another thing I wanted to update you guys on that I haven't showed you yet but has been a major game changer for the print shop is this ups um it's like a backup battery pack and i have three of my printers hooked up to it i don't have this one hooked up but i have all three of these hooked up to it i learned that if i had four hooked up to it that was too much and it actually blew the fuse so i've got three of them hooked up if the power goes out those three will continue running one of them will go down, but I still need to order a second one of these so that I can hook up the single color P1P and the A1 to it once I get that one running. But it has been a very nice addition to the shop. I'll link it in the description just in case you guys want to know which one I bought. So this is the final setup that I've got for my four P1Ps. They are a lot closer together, which I think is gonna be a good thing. This one, I had to make sure there was still room to get the plate out, but the others, I don't really see any issues with how I have this set up. And then there's plenty of room over here for me to set up the A1 combo. So if you see on the box, if you're not familiar with this one at all, 
It's two completely separate pieces. They don't stack like the P1 and the AMS. So I'm hoping that one day I can hang this piece on the wall above this or like clamp it to the top like I've seen people doing. For now, I don't really have that option or I haven't prepared for that. So we're gonna set it up as two independent pieces and see how that goes. We've got the room for it, so we should be good to go. All right, let's get into this box. Oops. All right, so this piece just comes off the top. Inside of here is the build plate and looks like the guide for the build. That's cool. All right, so, so far this has a bit more than the P1P had to put it together, but I knew that going into it. All right, so I'm gonna take off all of these things and keep on moving. Lift up this whole piece, yeah. All right, so once I took that top part off, this, I guess, is the machine. And then all that's left is the base down here. Some more stuff underneath. Cables and some filament. And some desiccant. All right, so now we've got the base here. And then that is the part that will attach to it. That's the axis, I guess. Remove protective film before use. Got it. Goodness gracious, okay. From here it says that the first thing you do is install the build plate with correct orientation, aligning the edge with the heat bed. All right, so that wasn't super easy. I still don't think that it's on there perfect. Jeez, this is difficult. All right, now it's on there. That was not the easiest thing to do. It does not want to align very easily. Flip the base housing 90 degrees to the side, opposite to the screen. Use Allen key H2 to remove the four highlighted screws at the bottom of the base housing to unlock the heat bed. Okay, so I need to take out these green screws right here. Okay, now the bed moves, that's nice. So next I need to put the printer frame into the bed housing. Okay, that's good. Next, cut the zip tie and cardboard wrapped around the tool head and X axis. So if you're looking at this, it does give you exactly what to do in the green. Get rid of this, which we did, this, this, and then there was one down there. So all of the zip ties are done. Push the heat bed fully to the front end where the screen is located. Done. So I need the back of the printer. And it says, open the Y-axis cover, pull out the Y-axis cover gently. So that's this. Pull it out. Okay. Install 10 screws for the base housing in the holes highlighted in green. Push the heat bed to the other end and install two screws in that spot. Next, push the heat bed fully to the front end where the screen is located. Gently slide the Y-axis cover back into place. Make sure to align the clip. All right, back into place. Turn the A1 90 degrees onto its rear, laying it on the edge of a table. Align the two clips on the cable box with the holes on the base housing. And then the USB-C clicks into place. Nice and flush, then screw in the pre-installed screw, highlighted in green. That. All right. Plug in the three harnesses according to color, tuck into the cable slot, then close the cover. All right, so I assume I can set this back up now. Fold out the touch screen. Next, install purge wiper. And I think that is correct. Then there is a screw underneath. I guess the printer's done. Next, we are building the AMS. You put the AMS light body on the stand, the cable on the upward end. Okay, so they have the picture like this. Secure the AMS light with four of the screws in the accessory box. Number two. Right, and then the other side. 
Okay, and then the last one. Slide the rotary spool holders on, all the way in, being careful to match colors to avoid damaging any parts. Next, we need all of these cables. Put the AMS light to the right side of the printer. Insert all four of the PTFE tubes into the tool head filament hub. Okay, so there's different lengths depending on where they need to go. So when you take it out of the package, they're all already in a little connector piece. They're like all together. And you can hopefully see here that there are two that are longer and then two that are shorter. These two will be the two shorter ones. And then these two over here, three and four, are the longer ones. And then this cable connects into the organizer. And then all of these clip into here. Plug the AMS light four pin connector into the port on the right of the A1. So on the back here, we have the cable, plug that in, and then plug the power cable in and I'm done. Log in successfully. All right, starting its tests. Right, so while this calibration is going on, I'm gonna go upstairs and start putting together the pieces to make these AMS risers. All right, we've already put together one of these before. I'll link in the description where we got the files. I know it works out well. I'm just gonna start putting the pieces together and get it done pretty quick. All right, both of these are glued together. We're just waiting on that to dry. Now let's head back downstairs, check on that printer, and see if maybe we can send our first test print. All right, calibration is completed. So to be able to use Sunlu rolls on the AMS light, they actually created a modification piece so that it will go inside. So like the Sunlu rolls, whenever you put them on, they aren't like a snug fit, they come off really easily. So they've created a modification to go on the inside. So I figured that would be a cool first print to run on this thing. Uh, it's only like 32 grams. I guess it really doesn't matter what color, but I have some light blue that I can use. All right, so let's see how this works. All right, so I'm gonna put this into the first slot here. Is that just like normal for it to stop right there? Um, all right, well, I'm gonna say that that is normal. If you can't see what I'm talking about, it fed to about halfway. So let's go upstairs and see if it'll print. All right, so this is the part that I'm printing. I'll link to it in the description so you guys can see it if it turns out okay. All right, let's see if that works. I'll let you know when it's done. First print is going pretty good. Man, this looks so weird compared to the P1Ps. I've got this one running to print three more of them, so I have all four done. But it's just crazy seeing the difference between a bed slinger like the A1, and then I think maybe this is called a Core XY. It just looks so different. I started printing with a bed slinger, but it's been a while. And man, this thing is actually pretty quiet. We'll see how it turns out. All right, this print is done. Looks like it turned out pretty nice. Now I just gotta get it on a Sunlu roll and see if it actually works on the AMS light. The next thing I'm gonna test is a multicolor print since I only did a single color print this time. I will let you know how that goes once I get it running. First multicolor prints going down. I decided to actually do a nameplate that is for a customer. Hopefully it turns out okay. It's gonna end up being purple and white. So I'll show you guys once it's finished, but so far so good. All right, you guys, it's the next day. I had to wait for the glue on the risers to finish drying, but it's done now. So we're ready to put those into place. The A1 is currently printing a multicolor print. As soon as that's finished, I will show you the final product. Hopefully it works. I think it's going to so far, it's been fine. I plan on doing a full breakdown video very soon about my initial thoughts on the A1 and comparing it to the P1Ps that I've been running. 
I don't think that kind of breakdown would fit into this video. It's more of a vlog style. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that one. We're pretty much ready to wrap this video up. So let's head downstairs, get these risers set up underneath the AMS units. And then once that print's finished, I'll show you the final product and we'll be done with this day. All right, so here's the final product on the risers. The top part, you can see the paper kind of stuck with the glue. I could scrape that off if I really wanted to, but the AMS is just gonna be sitting on top of it. So I don't think that's gonna be a very big deal. They're ready to go, so let's head downstairs and put them into place. We're using this clear double-sided tape again. I'll make sure to link it in the description so you guys, in case you need any really good double-sided tape. I think I got it on Amazon, so I hopefully will be able to find it. Hopefully that doesn't fall. Oh man, I forgot I have to route this PTFE tube through a little hole back there. I did this in the last video, but in case you haven't seen that, I'll show you again. So if I put the riser on top as it is, it's just gonna crush this PTFE tube. So back here, there's a little hole. I'm gonna have to take it out of these little clips and feed it through the hole right here. So I'm gonna start working on that now. Now I know for next time. That one is done. Now I can put this on top finally. All right, now put the AMS back on top. One down, one to go. And put this on top. All right, now I've got all three of my AMS units on risers. And that is going to help out a ton because I loved having this one on a riser. All right, this print turned out great. I had no issues with the multicolor switching places or retracting or anything. So I think this is going to work out pretty nicely for my multicolor prints. All right, and that's going to do it for this video. I got a ton of things done today and yesterday. I wanted it to be just a one single day vlog, but waiting for the glue to dry and then building this printer took a bit longer than I thought it was gonna take, but we still got it all done. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate all of your support over the past three or four months. 2024 has been a slower start for me due to sickness and Christmas and the holidays and all of that, but I promise you more videos are coming. Stay tuned for the A1 follow-up video and comparison to all the P1Ps that I've been running. I definitely have some pros and cons for that video, so not something you're going to want to miss. Subscribe if you haven't. We're on the road to 5,000 subscribers. Again, thank you guys so much for the support. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.